When I first saw the new Maven uh, challenge that was related to Harry Potter this month, I, th I knew that it was going to be popular. So when I was reading through the challenge and what was included in there, I was drawn to this sentence where it said, share a single page visual that captures the magic of Harry Potter movies. And I sort of focused in on capturing the magic. So when I started looking at the data that was included here, I wasn't too concerned about the movies, uh, budgets. It was more about the characters, the places they were at in the spells and how that was contained within the dialogue. So when I started looking at the data set itself, I could see we have the characters and their description, the houses they were in and their IDs. When I looked at the dialogues, I could see, again, chapter IDs, place IDs, characters, and what people were saying, so they were linked to each other. But when I looked at spells, I saw a spell ID and the descriptions, but no way to link it back to the other data sets. So in, what I was ending up here was I had the character information and maybe the dialogue, so I could connect these through the character IDs. But the spells, you're not able to directly connect them to the other data sets. How could I get these spells to link either to the dialogue or the characters? So my challenge is set. I had to think about this and I came up with two different methods to achieve this. The first method was to count the number of spells cast by a particular character. And the second method would be, I would be able to identify the actual spell or incantation itself that was performed by the character. And we could count that so that we could look at which spell was cast and who was casting it in which dialogue of line. And then we could link that back to the character IDs. So method one was to count the number of times a spell was cast by a particular character. So what we're going to have to do is go into Power Query to do this. So we go into Edit. So once we're in Power Query, we go to our Spells um, Query, and we go to the Incantation column. And what we want to do is convert this column to a list. So we just go up to Transform and convert to list. So it now extracts that information and converts it into a list. What we're going to do is we're going to keep this as a reference list to look up all our values in our dialog. So next we go back to our dialog and we put on our dialog and what we want to do is we want to add a column and add a custom column. So I'm going to do this step in a number of steps just to show you how it's built up. So the first thing that we're going to do is call out splitter dot split text by any Spells and then dialogue and then close the brackets. So we're going to hit OK here, and what we have is a custom column with a list. So if we click on that list, it creates a list of the dialogue that's in here. This is just to show you that. That uh, invocation, the splitter, it goes through the dialogue and it looks for any um, text value from the spells and it splits it out into separate cells. So what we want to do to this is we want to count the number of rows in this list. 
and that will tell us where we have more than one row. It'll tell us that there's a spell on that within that line of dialog. So if we wrap this in a list dot count, close that in parentheses, and we hit OK, we'll get numbers here. So the number one means there's just one line of dialog, so it hasn't split out any spell. But if we look at this, we will find here that we have instances where there are more than one. So if I just filter this just to show you, you'll see now we have te text that looks like it's a spell, expel expelleramus, ridiculous, etc., etc. So there, this um, code has enabled us to isolate the lines of dialogue that contain a spell. There's one more thing that we can do, so I'll just remove that filter and we go back. That one thing is we can add in here a minus one to wrap that. And we get the zeros. And then what we can do is we simply filter out and we see where we have. Spells within the text. And you'll see here we have one where we have spot five spells because they have repeated it. Lumus maxima, lumus maxima, lumus maxima, etc. So that's why that is counting that line five times. So I was pretty happy with that. The fact that I could count uh, the lines of dialogue that contained spells and then also even within a single line of dialogue, the number of spells within that line of dialogue. At the same time, I was wondering, is there a way for me to then extract the spell itself so I can see, okay, in this line, this character said ridiculous. And that means I could then calculate how many times this character was saying particular spells. What would I need to do to do that? So I'm going to redo this me a separate method that allows me to extract that information so stay tuned for part two. Okay, for part two, I've just created a duplicate dialog and just called it extract spell. So this one, this step is quite easy. We just create a custom column. And we're going to call it find spell. And this is a very, very simple calculation. So what we're just saying is equal spells. So what that does in effect is if I click here, you have, if I look at the bottom and you scroll down, it's every spell. So it's a list of each spell is, has been assigned to each line of dialogue here. And then the next step is we want to expand this to new rows. So we click the double arrow at the top. We click expand the new rows. And what this has done is for each line of dialogue, it has duplicated it and then assigned each spell or incantation from our spells list. So whatever number that we had, if it was 61 spells, then Every line of dialogue has been duplicated 61 times. Now this is okay for this dialogue set because I think it's in the low number of thousands. But if you had a very large data set like last month's data set on the taxi challenge, I wouldn't recommend using this method. Otherwise, you would go from 20 million line items up to hundreds of millions, potentially billions of line items. So. It's okay in this instance, but maybe it's not useful for very large data sets. Um, step is to find whether this, this spell is included within the line of dialogue. So again, we'll just create a custom column here. Shall we call it? And we're going to use 
just a simple text. false return on all of these, that means that this line does not contain any of these spells. But as with the previous method that we used, fairly simple method that we can use here. And so we'll just load up the data and we can filter out any false. And there we go. So it's returned where we filter for trues. It's showing us now that we can say this line contains Alahomara or Immobilis or Finite, so we can see which spell has been cast in which line of dialogue, and then we can trace this, this back to the character ID and also the place ID, chapter, etc. So, and this was kind of what I had in my mind when I started this exercise. I wanted to be able to tell who cast the spell, where they cast it, when they cast it what exactly was the spell that they cast. If I drop this into a chart, a bar chart, I can look at the number of spells by an individual character. So Harry Potter, 46 spells, Hermione, 27, Ron Weasley, 7. And I scroll down and see everyone. So, so hopefully this has helped anyone who is having the same thought process, but maybe you hadn't quite worked out how to extract the data. If you're interested in other videos on DAX, Power BI, Power Query, uh, give me a like and a subscribe. Um, I'll be posting more videos like this in the near future. Any comments or feedback, just drop them in the comments below. That's all for now. Thank you.